Alright, so I want that circlip off. Now, normally what I find works well is to use a rule to push that across. Well, this will do. Here's my rule. Well, there it is. Okay, that's what I was looking for in the first place. Alright, so what I'm going to do is just click that like that. That just pushes that C clip or E clip across, and I can unhook it then with the tip of a screwdriver, lift that off and this is what I'm dealing with here is this old grease, it's a bit sticky, it's dried and sticky, I just want that off um, you can see where over time that grease has collected dust and it's ground down it acts like a grinding compound when grease picks up dust and it's actually cut through the nickel plating at that point. Just checking that this arm here is free. It's not. It's oozing its way back into position. Basically at this point here, this pivot point, which is riveted on, it's a bit sticky. It doesn't move smoothly. There's a couple of possibilities here. It's either stiff here or the needle, or sometimes the meter's been thumped in at the top, it crushes the housing at this point, and that needle there, the follower needle, will be rubbing on the case. I'll just give that a nudge down and see if it makes a difference. It did. So our problem was that, that the top of the meter had been pushed down, and as a result, the follower needle was rubbing on the inside of the case. Now I just nudged that slightly downwards. And now it's got plenty of clearance, everything moves smoothly. Which is great, because it means I don't have to open up the top of the meter. And meters, they're easily damaged. I mean, you've only got to look at them the wrong way, and they're ruined. So if I don't have to open them up, that's a real win. So let's get that in place. Put our clip back on there. That's good now. That Previously that was sort of just oozing its way into position. It was not snappy at all in its action. So in preparation for putting that back on the top of the camera, First I want to put a couple of drops of lacquer on the top of that screw there so that that can't work its way loose. So I put just a drop. And there and there, that is sufficient. That'll lock that screw. You don't need to paint the entire screw. Some people are inclined to think they need to paint the top of the whole top of the gear bright red. That's not the case and it doesn't help. That's good. Our meter window here is a little bit grimy looking. I'll just... it's not bad. I'll just give that a once over. Lightly because the plastic scratches very easily. Just to pick up any dust or dirty marks. That we can put to one side. I need to work on the top cover. This needs to be cleaned. So, what needs to be done here? Well, we can start by taking off the accessory shoe. And the screws are loose. So, that wouldn't have been long for this world before that fell off. I'll take that off so that I can clean the top cover. As you can see the marks there. Typically dirt and grease and rubbish gets under there and it starts corrosion. The viewfinder components here are very slightly hazy. So we have to dismantle this to get those apart and clean them. I'll start here. Now this is sprung loaded, this, this metal spring here, so if you aren't watching it will fling that screw into space. So make sure you 
aware of that and are holding your finger on it. There's one from the other end. Here's the metal plate. Removing this, we have a retainer frame there. This is glass on Retinet 1As and the like, that's plastic. This window here, we have a frame, has a little mask in here, there's a bit of dust and rubbish on there. That's like a piece of film. In front of that, there's this diffuser. Now the diffusion side goes to the front, the clear side goes to the back. In front of that, we have this frame. And in front of that, we have a plain piece of glass. At the rear, we have a retainer here, which is usually stuck in with a touch of lacquer. It retains that rear eyepiece glass. To remove that, now the eyepiece glass, it's a lens. Now it's slightly convex on the inside surface, flat on the outside surface, towards the rear it's flat. There's a little metal frame that sits in the recess that that sits in. See if I can shake that loose. There it is. That little frame sits down inside that recess there. Our frame counter here has a return spring on it. It's hooked onto the side here, so I'm going to unhook that spring for the frame counter. Leaving it connected to the body of the viewfinder. The viewfinder is held into the top cover with two screws. Now this is a front silvered mirror there. Front surface mirror. This other screw is actually loose. Lift out those two screws. The viewfinder should lift out. Now the viewfinder assembly, you don't need to disassemble this any further. I'm going to clean this in um, some warm water, in a glass of warm water, with a drop of dishwashing liquid in it, and it'll get three minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, be pulled out, run under the hot tap to rinse it all away, and I will dry this with a hair dryer using a puffer, to blow away any droplets of moisture while that's happening so that they don't form coffee rings on the glass and then that should be ready to go back in place. Everything else can be cleaned by hand. And the top cover itself, our rear glass here in the finder window, that's just plain glass. You can clean the inside and the outside quite easily from here. Everything else looks pretty straightforward in there. There's nothing I need to worry about. The meter window I'll need to clean carefully. There's a rubber pad here that's coming away. We're going to have to glue that back in. That rubber pad holds the meter in position. Now I can see from the glue on that, that's not the original glue. That's some gunk that somebody else has used. I'm going to get that off with a bit of... Uh, I'll, I'll try some of this CRC Electra Clean, see if that'll shift it. Just because it's thick, it's failing, and it just looks messy. I want rid of that, I'm going to have to glue that pad back in there again anyway. That pad holds the meter down in position. If you didn't have that pad there, your meter would rattle. I'm 
yeah that that glue's going away nicely there that's it's not going to cause me any problems and of course by cleaning that with solvent means that I've got any grease or rubbish off it so that when I put fresh glue on there there's every likelihood that it'll actually stick something Yeah, it hasn't stuck to the rubber at all here, it's completely let go of the rubber. Loud crashing sounds next door, the neighbours are doing renovations. My neighbours' renovations are a sight to behold. It's like watching a child building a fort. Right, so I'll clean this cover, clean the inside of this cover. Got to make sure I get rid of any grit um, or old grease, anything that's likely to cause problems in the future. And the top itself, on the outside, I'm just going to use a bit of naphtha here. That top cover is very clean as top covers go. I'm not using naphtha anywhere near that metre window because I don't want to damage it. I'll use a little bit of glass cleaner on that. Lightly clean that. And the same on the inside. Yeah, I'd say that meter had been dropped on its head at some stage. Just, just looking at the slight distortion on that top cover. And the you can possibly see a slight crease here where the accessory shoe has hit the, hit the ground. I'll just clean the glass on the rear, the eyepiece there. Now the viewfinder in this one, as I say, said earlier, is, is quite clean as these things go. It's not a bad example, but... If you've got it apart, you might as well get it as good as you can possibly get it. Get everything sparkling. It's taken 60 years to get stripped down to this extent. It's probably not going to get stripped down in another 60 years. It's its last chance. Okay, well I'll go and clean my viewfinder in the ultrasonic cleaner and then start reassembling things. Right, things are clean. Let's get this back together. So I'll start by getting this back in position. Two screws hold that in place. Be careful, particularly with this screw, that you don't slip with your screwdriver and scar the plastic lens next to it. See if I can hook up the return spring for the frame counter. That's quite a strong spring that one. That's it. Okay, well I've cleaned the other components as while I've been waiting. So get that 
little metal ring back in position. Check that there's no dust sitting on that rear lens at eyepiece glass because of course I have no access to it once I put this piece in place. Put this in position. Now this lens should be convex surface to the front. Oops, it's just tipped out. Let me get that back. No, it's just flipped over. Now the retainer slides in, that's sprung loaded. It's not particularly easy to get into position. Now I'll just check that by looking through it, make sure that glass is clean and there's no dust trapped in there. That looks good. I'll just change this battery. Okay, so we have viewfinder lens at the front and the mask. The glass for the uh, image, our frame lines image, get that in place. Now this piece is really three pieces, I'm trying to get this in place. That diffuser slide that in there that went deceptively well let me just look through that and see if I've got it the right way up yes the parallax marks are correct look at the top of the frame so that's good that went surprisingly well. Now two screws here hold this in place. Now be careful getting these screws in place because it is, it's great at flinging the screws across the room when you don't get them started as you expect. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that viewfinder image is nice and bright. The accessory shoe can go back on that top cover, I think. Just give that a wipe. With a bit of naphtha. fit the three screws in place. Now the little rubber retainer here for the meter that holds the meter down. Let's get that in position. I want a bit of adhesive for that. Let's put a bit on the paper. Get 
it's some of that adhesive on there. And get that down into the top cover in there. Bring the camera back into the picture. Where is the that was clever? I'll just take my film release button, put a wipe of molybdenum and paste through the centre of that, put that in position. Put a wipe of synthetic grease on that cocking rack. Get the meter seated. Get the shutter release button in place. Last puff to blow out any dust from the finder. top cover in place. Now I need to check my frame count and make sure that that moves correctly. The numbers are centered up in the notch. It drives probably just a little bit too far forward. Let me just make an adjustment to that screw here. Screw that in slightly. Now somebody's put something on the threads of that screw. It looked like glue but clearly wasn't because it moved. But somebody put something on there. That's better. And the shutter release works nicely too. Okay. I'll put the screws in the top cover. at the strap lug end, at the uh, rewind end. These are chrome plated screws of course. One at the end of the top cover. Rewind knob can go on next. Just take the dust out of this piece. Make sure that's nice and clean. Here's its matching piece. And we want its wavy washer and the screw. I wipe some synthetic grease on our wavy washer, fit that over the film reminder indicator, put the rewind knob over the top, take the screw, run that through the centre and do that up tight. Check that you can move the film re the film type reminder. That looks good. And here we should have a collar on the top, a rewind knob, put something through the fork, do it up tight, that's done. 
and meter dial, settings dials. Let's get this done. So here mostly all I'm interested in is cleaning away any old grease and dirt. Now this is quite clean, which suggests that someone's had that off in uh, historically recent times, sometime in the last 30 years. Let's clean the dials. Okay, so the wavy washer, lubricate that lightly with a bit of synthetic grease. The film speed dial goes on there. The little setting plate on the top is another wavy washer. It goes under the screw, so I'll put a wipe of grease on that. And the screw goes in at the top. I'll run that screw down. Check the position of my dial. Now that alignment mark was between 17, 16 and 17 before. And that's where I'll put it back and then I'll check my meter for accuracy after that. I'll just turn that scale and I'll go and test that meter. That was good, that was certainly within half a stop over a five stop range. That's that's great. So that meter's good, um, certainly as good as it needs to be. At the base of the camera, I need to get my letterette back on the base. So I have that here. That's all clean and ready to go. Let's take the advance lever off. One last wipe to make sure that there's no grease on that base plate. Since it's camera's had a lot of handling while I've been working on it. That's good. That base plate's nice and clean. And the letter it here, I just need to put my adhesive on there. That should do. I'll spread that out evenly. Making sure I get cover to the edges. the camera. Okay, make sure it's all down evenly. Leatherettes usually shrink which means they don't want to fit neatly round a raised boss like this or round here around the rewind button. So make sure that it's pressed down firmly in those positions. A 
but that looks great. That's, I'm very pleased with the state of that because it was not lying very flat before. I didn't think it was going to go back flat, but it did. Let's get here. This screws in this advance better. That's better. Do those up. And the leatherette patch. The leatherette patch for the film advance lever. I'll just put some adhesive there on the paper. Transfer that with a toothpick to the back of my leatherette. You're dealing with small bits of leatherette. It's often easier to do it this way than to try and squirt the adhesive directly onto the item. You can easily end up with an embarrassment of adhesive there if you do that. Okay, there's that patch. I'll put that on there. Now this leatherette does have a grain and you can line up the grain of the leatherette on the patch with the leatherette on the base. That looks quite nice. We're running out of things to do here. So, the back catch cover needs to go in place. Finding the springs, the screw and the spring. So, that spring just flip away. Okay, let me find that spring. It hadn't gone very far, in fact I'm not even sure I really lost it. So I'll get this in place. That spring clipped into place. Put the cover back over the top. Get that screw down lightly. Check that that moves and it returns freely. It does. That means that the spring's not trapped in some funny position, getting mutilated. It's where it should be. Put the second screw in, check again, tighten the screws up, and that's that. which only leaves me with one task and that's to check the focus. So I want my stuff for dealing with that and basically I'm just going to check that on a suitable infinity target and I've got one right out the window. And I'll be setting that on B. I want my aperture round on 2.8 on B, 2.8. Why is that moving further than that? I think that's right. Okay, let me check. This coupling here had come out of place. It wasn't sitting correctly in the notch. And as a result, it, it was not indicating the correct aperture.
I think that's okay now. It's just whether it stays where it's put. I think that's fine. I'll put that back together now and uh, see how we go. Let's get this flash contact connected first. That's the trickiest bit. It's wriggling that wire into place and doing the screw up without disturbing anything. Well, the disconnect with the aperture settings at the back was down to undue stiffness in the depth of field pointers. And I mentioned earlier that one of these pointers appeared to be somewhat less than 90 degrees there at the pointer, like the pointer had been bent. And that certainly appears to be the case. So I'm going to square that up. And I think its make doesn't look much better. And these are just not moving as smoothly as they should do. Which is a bit of a surprise. It certainly looked like everything was going to move smoothly for me before. But there is problems. These do not counter rotate. See that one there is out of square too. The opposite way. It's not much. But these are just not moving as smoothly as they should. I don't know whether I've got any contamination on there. I know that if there's any grease on that surface that can make them stick. But whatever it is, I'm going to have to get this depth of field pointer set mechanism working correctly because it was providing some undue friction and preventing the uh, aperture settings from moving smoothly at all. Now the diaphragm itself moves very easily, there's no problem there. But uh, resistance here was causing the, uh, the coupling to drop. Oh well, I'll work my way through it and I'll report back. There's certainly nothing particularly obvious here that I would immediately jump on and say, oh yes, that's going to cause problems. It just doesn't look like that. Right, more later. Well, so near and yet so far. The problem was this. Our aperture setting lever here has a little notch in it, in the rim, at this point. And the notch has to engage with this little tag here. And so what's the problem? Well, the problem is this. At some stage in its life, most likely the diaphragm was glued up with oil. And somebody had forced this ring. And the little metal tag on here, being steel, has carved away the aluminium at this point. And so it doesn't get a good grip at that point. It's only touching over a probably less than half the, the width of that aluminium edge. And this is fairly mobile because it floats to a certain extent on the spring. And of course if it moves slightly this way, that little metal tag just rides up that slope it's cut and then it just it's carved a track into the aluminium all the way through down here. So, I'm going to have, I've been through my vast collection of bits and pieces, I have nothing. I have no shutter parts like this. I, I had hoped that it would be similar to something else I had, but that was a vain hope. So I'm going to have to get around this another way. And what I'm planning to do is to glue a piece of metal to the inside of this ring in this section here, this little piece here, I'll glue a piece of metal in there 
and leave an ear sticking up either side. And the idea of that ear sticking up either side is to catch this tag here either side, which effectively will do the same job as that notch, which is currently not doing the job well enough. So I've got to form a small piece of metal, and I want it to be relatively thin, because I'd like it to be no thicker than that recess in there, so that I, I don't disturb my clearance. Pips 24 gauge, something like that, and I'll have to glue it in there. So I'll probably make it fairly wide, as wide as I think I can make it go in there, just so as I've got a good surface area to glue it in. So I'll just arrow like that thing in there, epoxy. And as I say, I'll just have two ears sticking up, one either side, to connect with this tab, and that should do the job for me. It's this tab here, isn't it? Yeah. That should do the job for me, I hope. So that's what I've got to do. So I'd reached the finish line, but unfortunately I'd stumbled. So that's what I'm, my task for the day is to deal with that. And I'm not pleased about it. I know it's just going to eat up a ridiculous amount of time for such a simple thing. But what can you do when there are no spare parts? Well, with some work with the Dremel, files and epoxy. I've got that bracket made and installed and it looks good. Hopefully now this will reassemble nicely and um, I'll be able to finish this job. Next time you see me, which will be in about a few seconds for you and in about 10 minutes for me, we'll have a complete camera. Well, this project certainly took me longer than I expected, but I got to the end of it. We've got our rat net 2B all cleaned up and ready to go home. I'm glad to see the end of this particular project. I honestly didn't think it would take that long, but uh, that little hiccup with the aluminium ring here that was worn, that was enough to cause me all that grief, really. But everything's working nicely, depth of field pointers move beautifully and smoothly, everything's just as it should be. And I'm sure the owner will be pleased to see this one come home. And the leatherettes, they look better now than they did when it started too. Thanks for watching.